Good evening. Tonight we're going to continue with our Unit 4, our Lesson 29. Solve problems by using data from a line plot. Here's a, an example of a line plot. So it gives you a number line broken up into some whole numbers and mixed numbers. And it's a, an example of a school news. And it says most schools in our area have school day longer than seven hours. The X represents the school. So each X represents one school reporting on how long their school day is. And then in this questioning, should we increase the length of our school day? Well, most of you are gonna say no, but this is just an example of how you would use a line plot. Based on the data on the line plot, the claim is not true. Only seven schools have a school day more than seven hours. So the highest amount of, the, of how many hours would be seven hours exactly. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other schools that have more than a longer day. Everybody else, the 13 of the other schools are either seven or fewer. So this just helps you display data. So it's easier for you to read and understand. So we're going to be doing this tonight and practicing this skill more tomorrow on using line plot, plots and plotting our, our whole numbers, our fractions, and our mixed numbers, and then being able to answer questions based on that data. Okay, here's our first problem. Zara measures the distance her paper airplane travels each time she throws it. She records the data on her line plot. Now, what does our line plot look like? Well, oops, our line plot is looks like this so this is what we got and they've plotted the whole numbers 14 15 16 and 17 but they didn't plot the tick marks in between those two whole numbers so we're going to be having mixed numbers between them so well, how we figure that out what we normally always do is we go how many what, what, what is it broken up into that denominator so we have one two three, and that whole represents that four. So this is fourths. So this is broken up into fourths. So now that we know that, now we can add, put on our mixed numbers. So 14 and one fourth, 14 and two fourths, 14 and three fourths. Okay, same thing for 15. So we have 15, one fourth, 15, two fourths, and 15 3 fourths, same thing goes with 16. We have 16 1 fourth, 16 2 fourths, and 16 3 fourths. All right, so now that's broken up into fourths. Now we can see if we can answer some of these questions. How many times does Zara throw her paper airplane? Well, just like when I showed you the school news and how those X's uh, work, um, how each X represents one particular person who's reporting it. This is going to be the same thing. So each X represents how many tries she does. So let's count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So she throws the airplane ten times because that X represents each time she throws it. What is the longest distance her airplane travels? Her longest distance is closer to that 17, so that would be 16 and 3 fourths feet. That's the longest she was able to do it, but she only did that one time because the X is showing just one. Use the greater than, less than, or equal to to compare the longest distance to the shortest distance. Well, the shortest distance is 14 and one fourth and the longest is 16 and three fourths but i'm noticing that we should be doing because it says the longest so we should really show the longest first so 16 three fourths of a foot is feet excuse me is greater than 14 and one fourth okay so next question 
which distance occurs the most frequently? Well, the one that has the most X's is 15, is this one right here, 15 and 1 fourth. So we're going to write 15 and 1 fourth feet. This one occurs the most because it has the most X's. The next one would be 16, 16 feet. Now let's go back. How many times does the airplane travel at least 15 and 2 fourths of feet? Remember, 2 fourths equivalent to a half. So how many times does 15 and 2 fourths happen? Well, it only happens 15 and 2 fourths. Where are you? Right there. 15 and 2 fourths, so that's just going to happen once. Estimate the difference between the longest and the shortest distance. So estimate, estimate. Okay, we're going to do an estimate of the longest. So the longest is 16 and 3 fourths, and the shortest is 14 and 1 fourth. So if we want to look at that, we would say 17 minus 14, and that's going to give us around 3 feet because we can round it up and we can round it down. So this one is going to be three feet. What is the difference between the longest and the shortest distance? And so now they want the actual estimate. They don't want an estimate, they want the actual number. So 16 and 3 fourths, let's try that again. Let me go 16, 3 fourths, take away 14 and 1 fourth. And we get two and two fourths. So this is the difference between the longest and the shortest distances. Zara throws her airplane more one more time. She records it, travels at 59 fourths feet. Where should the distance be plotted on the line plot? So 15, I'm sorry, 59 fourths, we gotta pull out those holes. And remember one way of show, telling you that is that we could do basic division. Four goes into 59. Well, it goes once. Bring down your nine, and then we divide again. Four goes into 19, that goes four times. Four times four is 16, with a remainder of three. So now we need to take that and make that into a mixed number. So we have 14 holes. The denominator always stays the same, which is fourths. And the remainder is your numerator. So 14, 3 fourths. Well, where would that be on the number line? That would be 14 and 3 fourths. There it is. I'm just going to make it red to show that's the, the last time she threw. So 14 and 3 fourths. So it's okay. So that, my friends, is how we would be using a line plot to help us answer questions. And it displays the data very org in an organized way and being able to read the information quicker. Okay, a fruit stand measures the weight of each bag of apples it sells on Monday. They make a line plot form from the data. All right, so here we go. Remember that each X represents each time they weigh the, app, the bags of apples. Um, and we're going to have to look at this carefully and see how between the, all the whole numbers, 2, 3, and 4, what are they broken up into? So we have to figure out what are the fraction that each one, the mixed numbers of each one of those tick marks represents. So how we figure that is how much is it broken into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the next whole is 8. So this is each section here is broken up into 8s. So therefore, I'm going to make my smaller here. So each one is going to be 2 and 1 eighth, 2 and 2 eighths, 2 and 3 eighths, 2 and 4 eighths, 2 and 5 eighths, 2 and 6 eighths, 2 and 7 eighths. And then we get to our whole, next hole, will be 2 and 8 eighths, which is really just 3. And now we continue. 3 and 1 eighth, 3 and 2 eighths, 3 and 3 eighths, 3 and 4 eighths, 
which is equivalent to a half, three and five eighths, three and six eighths, and three and seven eighths. And then when we get to that four, that would be three and eight eighths, which it really means just four. Remember, three eight eighths, eight eighths is really just a whole, so it represents four. What does each X indicate? Each X indicates the weight, the weight of one bag. How many bags of apples does the fruit stand sell on Monday? Well, if we count up all those X's, we're gonna count 16 bags. What is the weight of the lightest bag of apples? The lightest weight that, that, that they got a measurement of is down here, two and two eighths. Now they wanna know, use the greater than equals less than to compare the weight of the lightest bag of apples to the weight of the heaviest bag. Well, we got the weight of the lightest, which was two and two eighths. That's less than, and then the largest one that they were able to measure would be at three and seven eighths. Which weight occurs most frequently? Well, which one has the most X's? Now, the most X's is going to be three and two eighths. How many bags of apples weigh at least three and one eighths pounds? So let's see how many three and one eighths. Well, here is three and one eighths, and they have three X's on the top. So we're going to put. Okay, estimate the total weight of all the bags that is two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths, let's see. Two and seven eighths, where are you? Here it is, okay. So each one, they have two and seven eighths. So basically, that's just saying two and seven eighths plus two and seven eighths, which was going to give us four and 14 eighths, which we can't leave. And if we pull out those holes, we're only gonna have, end up having five. Our new mixed number is five and six eighths pounds. Because each one of those X's is going to represent two and seven eighths on that section. Where would a bag of apples that weighs six halves pounds be plotted on the line plot? Well, just like we did earlier, six halves we can divide two into six. Two goes into six three times with no remainder. So where would be three on there? Well, that will be the next hole. So we're gonna put a red X to show that we have a new measurement and that would be three. Six halves is equal to three holes. Okay, and there you go. This is another way of displaying and way of organizing information to read and help answer questions. Oh, so tired. Can someone help me? Well, maybe a lot of me talking tonight made you very tired. Well, we'll practice this more skill tomorrow. What is the purpose of line plots? Explain yourself in tonight's, using tonight's video as an example of why we use line plots.